once I started translating it, it was like, oh my God, my father and my mother would have sung this with so much pride. The Jewish community has a lot to be thankful for, as do all the ethnic communities that we live in a country like Canada. You knew that watching these people sing for the pride they have in their country today, in the language of many of their pasts, that we had something special that could resonate across borders. We're going to talk you through it just to fill you in very quickly on uh, how exactly this is going to go. In English, it's O oh, Canada, our home. There's an extra syllable, it's unser Heim. It's Canada Day coming up very soon. It's our 150th anniversary. And I think it'd be wonderful to be involved in the first Yiddish version of O oh, Canada. O oh, Canada, unser Heim. You got that? So it's all Canada unser Heim on Eden. Beautiful. Fluent in Yiddish. Okay. And once I started translating it, it was like, oh my God, my father, my mother would have sung this with so much pride. I'm a translator of Yiddish, so I've done a lot of Yiddish songs translated into English and vice versa. But what happened was Charlie Pachter uh, heard from Margaret Atwood, who heard from Dan Bloom, who heard from uh, Craig S. Smith, who's a reporter at the New York Times, that they were looking for the national anthem sung in uh, various languages. So Dan Bloom said, wow, I wonder if there's a Yiddish thing. So he emailed Margaret Atwood, who emailed Charlie Pachter and Deb Filler, and they emailed me, and I decided I'm going to translate it. Like all great events that take place at the Zoomerplex, it started with an email in the dead of night from Moses who said, naturally, if we're going to perform O Canada in Yiddish, we should do it at Zoomer Hall. And Moses has been a longtime supporter of Jewish community events in Toronto and nationwide. We work with Jewish Music Week on various concerts. We're a proud supporter of Ashkenaz Foundation and the Ashkenaz Festival at Harborfront Center. We are a proud media sponsor of the Toronto Jewish Film Festival. Yes, I, I love to sing, but I'm not singing today. So a lot of people would be quite happy about that. <laughs> I don't think so. So is this a difficult crowd to coach? Absolutely not, no, great. They're just so enthusiastic and they, they focus on you, their eyes are on you, and everything you tell them, they just absorb and they get it. And we've had a few run-throughs, so um, it should be very exciting. Great breath. Yiddish is supposedly a dying language, but there's so many people who love it. It has a music to it that's really difficult to... Um, it's a very direct language, and it has an incredible emotional tinge to it. So uh, people who spoke it or even heard it as children 
just jumped on the bandwagon and they just wanted to be part of this. We were very lucky to come to Canada yeah, because we ran away from the Germans to, to start shooting. This was the first day they were to, uh, flying with the planes and we were very, very much afraid. So we ran to the Russian border. We were very lucky. Jewish people are very grateful to Canada because a lot of Jewish people sort of arrived in Canada after having a very, very painful experience, you know, in their history overseas, in Europe, in, in Russia, in the Soviet Union, wherever. And they came to Canada as a land of, of, of freedom and have found prosperity here and happiness and uh, all the things that we love about our country. So I'm, I'm a proud patriot. I'm Jewish. I'm a proud, proud Canadian. We were very lucky to come to Canada yeah, because we ran away from the Germans to, to start shooting. This was the first day they were to, uh, flying with the planes and we were very, very much afraid. So we ran to the Russian border. We were very lucky and they opened the border for us and we came across. And the Russian soldiers helped us to go across and we were running a whole night until the morning and then the Germans started, almost start shooting. So they, they ordered us to come into the trains. It was cattle trains, and we were very lucky, but we were very hungry. <laughs> we, we were two weeks in the trains, and then they brought us to Siberia. We weren't arrested, we weren't arrested, but they just helped us to run away from the Nazis, because the Nazis killed a lot of Jews. They just go, I'm here for several reasons. The first one being I'm feeling a lot of nostalgia. I'm the grandson of immigrants. My poor little Russian Jewish booby came to Canada in 1914 and she called me Charles because she thought Charles was plural. And my family always called me Charles. They thought that was cute. But I also think there's something very poignant about all of this. I was in Halifax three weeks ago and I was at Pier 21, which blew me away. They've made it into a national museum. They found my grandfather online who came in 1916. His name was Charles Pachter. I never knew him. He died before I was born. So there's something very special about all of this. I was born in wartime Tajikistan. Infant mortality in Kuyab, Tajikistan during wartime was like well over 90%. So here I am born into this situation and of course uh, immediately contracted all the local uh, tropical diseases. Uh, apparently I had malaria, I had tuberculosis, I had typhus, I had whatever. And um, the, the only way to save me uh, um, was for my mother to uh, mutilate herself. She cut herself very uh, uh, savagely. 
uh, in order to qualify for entry into the hospital and because she was then in the hospital at the same time that I was. Uh, in other words, that uh, she would have been discharged and I would have been left. Um, that is what saved me. The story is, uh, my mother was running on her own. My dad was moving with a little group of his uh, buddies from um, his place of birth, which uh, had been in Latvia. And uh, my mom overheard them as a little group chattering with each other uh, and uh, speaking in Yiddish with bits of Hebrew. And so she knew these were, uh, these were fellow Jews. And she went over, introduced herself, and uh, managed to uh, hook up with this uh, little gang. Uh, ultimately, she paired off with my dad. Uh, his buddies kept on going, and they apparently were caught at the uh, Tajik-Afghan border and, uh, and were summarily executed. In the immediate aftermath of the war, my parents scanned the world trying to find somebody, anybody, because their families had been destroyed, and eventually found this one fairly distant relative left alive who lived in a funny place called Montreal, Quebec, Canada. And the voyage was wild, as I recall, or at least my parents were deathly ill through the whole thing. I roamed free around the boat for the two weeks. I'd bring my parents food, whatever they could hold down. Uh, but it was in that two weeks that I learned how to speak English. That's, that's what happened. Uh, what we have as a remnant of this whole passage is shots of me, a um, cute little plaid jacket, and a red cross tag. Ended up on the front cover of the largest circulating magazine in Canada at the time. Once we arrived here, I don't have as much clarity. I'm hoping by walking through these doors, something more will come to me. So nobody stayed here overnight? Well, they did, but in another space. Okay. And, you know, separate from where you would have come in when you would mm -hmm. arrive. Fred Smithers' wall of ships, so let me find my ship. Mostly people who have come to Canada through Pier 21, we have them write their memories. Or yeah, we saw that on the way through, didn't yes. we? Yeah. 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 So I don't know if you're interested in maybe writing something. Oh, sure. It'd be my pleasure. Well, this was so exciting to be part of because I'm not even Canadian yet. I'm American, but I am a landed immigrant. We've worked with Zoomer before, and Moses is fantastic that he came up with this idea. I'm so moved that we had so many people who were interested in taking part in this to do a Yiddish version of O Canada. It really reflects the beautiful diversity of this country. Oh, Canada, Michelle, by Dinesite, or by Dinesite.
Well, this was so exciting to be part of because I'm not even Canadian yet. I'm American, but I am a landed immigrant. We've worked with Zoomer before, and Moses is fantastic that he came up with this idea. I'm so moved that we had so many people who were interested in taking part in this to do a Yiddish version of O Canada. It really reflects the beautiful diversity of this country, this country that I absolutely love, and I'm so pleased that we're part of it. Thank you so much to Zoomer for getting us involved. This is a great opportunity to show how multicultural our land really, really, really is, isn't it? And if you're not sure, just go, go ahead, like a D, very soft. Go Good. One more time, we're staying. One, two. This is a wonderful uh, way of, of uh, giving homage uh, to the Yiddish language and also to be part of the diversity of Canada and Canada's 150th birthday. So that's why I'm here. We've all adopted some kind of language one way or another from wherever we've come, whether it's English or whatever have you, because we've all come into other lands, if you know what I mean. So it's great. This is his magazine, and, I, and I'm in it. That's why I'm holding it. Okay. Appropriate for Canada, great multicultural country. It's a great multicultural version of uh, O Canada, which uh, I think in Yiddish it gets translated as Oi Canada. The Jewish community has a lot to be thankful for, as do all the ethnic communities. That we live in a country like Canada where different cultures and multiculturalism is celebrated instead of excluded the way it is in some of the other countries in the world. So I love this song in, in Yiddish. Uh, I like the sounds, and you know, I know some Yiddish words through my. Uh, ex-family and through my guitar teacher of course he's fluent in Yiddish so it was a kind of challenge but it, it worked so well it was it was a lot of fun there was a great representation of Canada's multiculturalism here today and of course people of all ages and all cultures there's myself who's Asian Moses has always been very supportive of diversity and getting people together and of course sponsoring new things The video of Yiddish Show Canada has gone viral. The worldwide reception and international media attention has been extraordinary. It started with Dan Bloom writing in the San Diego Jewish News. Then it was covered in Canada's national newspaper, The Globe and Mail. Then it was picked up by The Tablet, who called it a must-see. Then the Yiddish Forward, the Jewish Press, the Times of Israel. But you knew that watching these people sing for the pride they have in their country today in the language of many of their pasts that we had something special that could resonate across borders, and it did. So now you know how the making of Yiddish O Canada came together, and when we come back, the anthem itself, O Canada in Yiddish.